everyone. Welcome to the Rotat Seafood Cairo. My name is Gabriel Becker. I'm the director of the Rotat Institute. And I'm very happy that you all made it uh, to this evening's panel discussion within our series on aesthetics and agendas, which we started a couple of months ago. Tonight, the topic is the currency of cultural diplomacy or the role of Western cultural institutions in Egypt. I think this could be a very exciting debate um, within the current context of discussions in this country. At least, I hope it will be. This series was curated by Ilka Eikhoff, who is also present tonight. Welcome, Ilka. The moderator of tonight will be Anna Safwa. She normally is a, a creative artist. She is a choreographer and dancer. And tonight she switches roles. And she told me when we met her briefly some weeks ago, she's very, very keen on this topic and uh, on moderating this panel tonight. Yeah, I don't want to take her time. She will introduce the panelists, but before I stop, I would like to thank my colleague who has made this even possible, who worked on it really hard the last weeks and months, and that is Jeanette Castle. It's her first event she has organized, and thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for coming and have a, an interesting and hopefully inspiring evening. Thank you. Before I start, I'd, I'd like to also just say I'm not a choreographer. I, it's an honor that I do not claim on myself, but I'm barely, I'm still learning. But uh, to start, I would like to introduce the panelists. Uh, Mr. Muhammad Al-Ghazi, who is the Executive Director of the Airport for Alternatives in Cairo. Uh, Stefan Ginter, he is the coordinator of the Joint Projects for the, uh, the German and Egyptian and Tunisian Transformation Partnership at the Good Institute of Cairo. Uh, Mr. Tony Saeed, he is an independent Egyptian filmmaker, writer of the Pacific. And this is Kathy Costain, head of the arts programs and uh, at the British Council in Egypt. So first of all, I'd like to start with uh, our first main question, which I'd like you, Kathy, to answer first, uh, five minutes each. And um, I'd like you to answer the general broad question. What is the role of Western cultural institutions And I'll take my five minutes, obviously, to talk specifically about the British Council um, and how we see our work in Egypt. Um, it may sound a little formal at the, at the beginning, but obviously the discussion uh, will open up as, as we warm up. The British Council itself was established uh, by Royal Charter in 1934 um, to specifically promote a wider knowledge of the United Kingdom develop a wider knowledge of the English language, encourage cultural, scientific, technological, and other educational cooperation between the United Kingdom and other countries, and otherwise promote the advancement of education. We now have 190 offices in 109 countries other than Egypt, um, but Egypt was actually one of the first three overseas offices we opened in 1938. Uh, so if you do the calculations, you'll work out um, that we've actually been present here in Egypt for 75 years this year. I think this shows quite clearly that we're here for the long term um, and through good times and not so good times. Um, there have been not so good times. Uh, no doubt you can all work out what these were. Um, but I think like all strong relationships, it, it has survived and thrived. 
Um, I have a favourite quote from the, the writer Yusuf Idris, um, which I think illustrates this perfectly. Um, he apparently said, during the day we protest against the British, and in the evenings we learn English at the British Council. And um, moving on to our aims, um, I would like to read you our, our current mission statement, um, our current vision, uh, which is that the British Council is the United Kingdom's Organisation for Cultural Relations and Educational Opportunities. Our purpose is to create international opportunities for the people of the UK and other countries and build trust between them worldwide. All the staff who work at the British Council in Egypt, from our country director, me, our teachers, all our teams are guided by this vision. We're building trust between the people and institutions of the UK and Egypt. And for us, both sides of the relationship are equally important. We're driven by partnership, consultation, learning together, um, and promoting positive change. We want to demonstrate that we're credible partners and responsive to the needs that Egypt and Egyptians are identifying for themselves. Our overarching focus is on improving the employability, the employment opportunities of young people, and also creating spaces, spaces for people to develop their, their voice, their ability to have a, a say. Um, we work in four key areas, which again haven't really changed since we were established, um, promoting more widespread and better quality teaching, learning and assessment of the English language. Um, finding new ways of connecting with and understanding each other through the arts, enhancing leadership of international education, and creating societies whose young people, citizens and institutions contribute to and benefit from a more inclusive, open and prosperous world. And we generally work with, with three main groups of people. Society and community leaders who can bring about changes in social, education and cultural policy. What we call influencers, um, so career professionals, educators, artists, scientists, business leaders and the media. And young people either in education or just starting out in their careers. We use different mechanisms to achieve our aims. I can obviously list these but I think they're probably similar to, to most other organisations like ourselves. These would involve exchange visits, study tools, conferences, um, workshops, training, grant schemes, um, networking events, um, and more and more often now, um, broadcasting and use the use of digital platforms. Um, just wanted to make a, a brief mention about our, our funding. Um, and I should firstly say that we are, you know, we are a non-profit organisation. Um, any income that we earn uh, through our work goes back into developing and expanding our programmes and activities. Um, globally, the British Council's total turnover last year was £739 million pounds sterling. Less than one third of that came from government grants through the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Um, we also uh, earn income from obviously the teaching of English, ad administering examinations and managing international contracts on behalf of clients like the European Union and the World Bank. Um, for every pound of government grant we receive, we earn another three pounds from other sources. And in Egypt we invest around 10 million pounds every year in the programme of activities I've, I've just described. Um, I don't want to go on, I could give you more, but I won't. We'll leave the discussion to grow. Ten million different parts. Sterling. Sterling. Not all the same, Yes. The Goethe Institute, the German Cultural Institute, the here in Egypt was established at uh, end of the 50s, and 58 and 59. We have the two institutes in Cairo and uh, Alexandria, so it's also a history of uh, more than 55 years. And 55 years means responsibility and means to build, that we were able to build with mutual trust that he was talking about. Um, our office here is a regional office, so um, there's a responsibility for 
uh, other institutes in, in uh, the, the region, Middle East and Northern Africa. Of course, in these 50 years, um, there happened a lot of changes also in our policies. And if you come back to the, the title of our evening, uh, the cultural diplomacy, uh, what we call nowadays cultural diplomacy, I, I guess that may, might be, uh, it was more true in the 50s or 60s. Uh, the Goethe Institute as association in Germany was established after the Second World War. And of course, uh, the image of Germany was uh, uh, tarnished, self-inflicted. So we wanted to give the world another image of and uh, the, the image of another Germany, the Germany of resistance, the Germany of uh, culture and education. So this was a policy in the 50s and 60s. Then in the 70s, this changed a lot. And we adopted uh, the so-called extended concept of culture, which included science, media, uh, the socio-political sphere, um, discursive, formats and uh, uh, discussions. And also we adopted uh, the partner orientation. Uh, our whole work is partner oriented. So this was a discussion in the 70s and uh, when our policies changed. Nowadays, we understand our role as, I would say, um, as facilitators facilitating exchange, facilitating encounters, bringing people together, exchange of people, of knowledge, of expertise. Uh, we uh, don't consider ourselves a funding organization, but we are providing platforms. We um, are offering incentives. And in the last year, it changed more and more from the one-way road to a two-way avenue. Uh, also changing our role a little bit uh, to a kind of mediator between our guest country and our home country. Um, maybe a little bit about our, our structure. Um, we are an independent association, but contracted by the ministry, uh, by our foreign office through a basic agreement. In this basic agreement, our main aims are mentioned like course, fostering international cultural cooperation, uh, German language, and what is also important, giving a comprehensive picture, uh, a multifaceted picture of uh, uh, Germany, and not only uh, a nice image. Um, if it comes to how we are working with uh, uh, foreign office, um, we have a lot of freedom within this framework of the basic agreement, except for one point, when it comes to opening and closing of institutes. This is where the ministry has the last say. And uh, concerning our funding, um, it's also it's a federal grant. We are also a non-profit organization, and uh, we are able to, from uh, our language courses, we are able to gain around one-third uh, of our own uh, income. Uh, one-third of the budget is from our own income. Um, the association, Goethe Institute, has uh, also uh, uh, their articles where uh, it's mentioned that we are promoting art, culture, science, and understanding between people. Our key areas of work are, uh, of course, it's language, it's German language, it's improvement of standards of language teaching, it's educational cooperation, and the uh, training of uh, trainers, training of teachers. It's encar encouraging cultural collaboration and providing access to the German cultural uh, scene information, information about Germany. Um, we have also a mission statement. Uh, by the way, all these papers are online available on our uh, website, so there's uh, no secret behind it. There's also a mission statement and 
to um, there are two points I I like very much uh, when it comes to the work here, especially in this region. That is that people speak openly. So we try to provide this platform of um, uh, that enables people to speak openly and uh, the principle of respectful cooperation. And uh, for me, the whole basis of the cooperation is respect, mutual respect. Um, I think I got the five minutes open. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so maybe I, uh, I, I do this in Arabic. So, to be ready. Just give me a sign to start. Okay. Um, يعني أنا مش هقدر أتكلم طبعا عن uh, uh, إيه هو دور المعاهد الثقافية الأوروبية في مصر من ناحية من وجهة نظر المعاهد، يعني أنا أقدر أتكلم عنه من وجهة نظرنا كناس بنشتغل على الأرض. Uh, الأول أنا لازم أقول حاجة مهمة يعني في أول كلام، إن أنا بيتهيألي إنه أنا بعمل اللي أنا بعمله في حياتي يمكن من أكثر من 15 سنة. أظن إنه المجموعة اللي بتدير المعاهد الثقافية في مصر دلوقتي هي أفضل مجموعة. يعني إحنا محظوظين في مصر إنه إن في الوقت ده بعد الثورة وفي لحظة يعني بعد ما بدأت الثورة وفي لحظة يعني لحظة يعني فيها منحنى كده للتغيير انه ان احنا الناس اللي بنشتغل معاهم على الارض هم اللي موجودين دلوقتي كاشخاص. فانا دي نقطة لازم اكون واضح فيها ان انا حاسس ان الاشخاص دلوقتي فاهمهم للواقع المصري اكثر بكثير من مراحل ثانية كانت كنا بنعاني فيها من ان في مشكلة في انه ما كانش في نفس الفهم للواقع والاحتياجات والاولويات اللي محتاجينها على الارض من ناحية القائمين على المعاهد. بشكل عام انا شايف ان الدور اللي المفروض تلعبه المعاهد ده بشكل عام هو انه في حاجه واضحه قوي. العالم مش هينفع يستمر بالطريقه دي. مش هينفع انه الجاف الفجوه اللي ما بين العالم الاول والعالم الثالث توسع. مستحيل يعني هنوصل لمرحله يعني الدنيا هتوسع. وهم لازم يعملوا دور، الدور ده مسؤوليه كل الناس ان هي تقلل الفجوه دي، تخلي الفجوه دي لما هم بيقللوا الفجوه دي هم ما بيعملوش خدمه بس لدول للدول الفقيره او المجتمعات بتاعت العالم هم كمان بيعملوا خدمه للعالم الاول عشان الفجوه دي مش في صالح الطرف. عشان الفجوه دي تقل هي طبعا هي فيها ابعاد كثيره اقتصاديه واجتماعيه ولا اخره بس هي خلينا نتكلم هنا عن البعد الثقافي بتاعها. البعد الثقافي هو ان احنا ازاي نخلق كوبري بريدج يسمح للثقافتين دول ان هم يلاقوا ارضيه مشتركه. للثقافات المختلفه دي ان هي تلاقي ارضيه مشتركه. وان هي لما ان ان الارضيه المشتركه دي تعمل حاجات كتير. عشان تكون الارضيه دي مشتركه لازم تكون متكافئه يعني لازم تكون ميوتر. لازم يكون الـ 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 الطرفين عندهم نفس الانترست ومتفقين على درجه ما من الاولويات اللي هي يمكن تكون مش هي دي الحاله اللي احنا بنتكلم فيها النقطه الثانيه طبعا ان انا رايي ان الـ 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 اي مؤسسه بالذات المؤسسات اللي بتشتغل جوه يعني هنا في بلادنا يعني لانه يعني طبعا في في مؤسسات موجوده برضه بره بس انا بتكلم عن اللي موجوده في بلادنا عندها دور مهم جدا ان هي تشتغل مع اللوكال كوميونتي عشان مع مع المجتمع المحلي عشان تشتغل ضد الاستيريوتايب ضد التنميط ضد الافكار المعلبه اللي احنا اللي موجوده عند الطرفين عن الاخر. 
يعني بمعنى ان احنا عندنا افكار مسبقه عند الـ عن الـ عن الـ الغرب والغرب عنده افكار مسبقه عندنا عنده عندنا عناوين جاهزه وليفلز جاهزه كده بتتوزع احنا بنتبادل واكيد الليفلز دي هي جزء من الفجوه اللي بنتكلم عنها فعشان نغير الليفلز دي لازم المعاهد دي يعني عندها دور اساسي في مواجهه الموضوع ده بالنسبه لي يعني اخر حاجه انا يعني يعني مش عارف اذا انا كده جاوبت على تصوري ايه الدور اللي انا متخيل ان هي المفروض تلعبه ممكن نتكلم اكتر مع في الوقت ولا بعد كده عن الجاب فين او ايه او بعد كده اوكي انا سبيكين عربي كورسه تامر اتكلم على يمكن ال بعد ثقافي لموضوع التعاون انا عايز افتح شويه عن موضوع سهل انا عايز قبل ما افتح انا يعني مش متخصص انا في الجو بتاع علوم سياسيه مش مش ثقافه او فن بس انا حد من المهتمين بالفن والثقافه طول عمري لو بنتكلم على فكره التعاون بالارض الشرق يمكن انا اجي ليه كله شايف فرق في السينما المصريه شديد لما ابتدى يوسف شاهين يتعاون مع المؤسسات الفرنسيه في انتاج افلامه وشفنا اول افلام في النص في اواخر السبعينات اللي فرقت في الكواليتي وفي الشكل وفي وفي الصوت اللي كان عندنا مشكله رهيبه فيه في السينما المصريه قبلها في الفتره اللي قبلها على طول مش تاريخيا يعني. في الحقيقه فكره التعاون بيستفيد بيها زي ما اتكلم الطرفين. يمكن في في مناخ مفتوح زي اللي في مصر ما احنا اتكلمنا عن المشاكل اللي فيه بس تبقى الصوره شويه مش واضحه لكن لو بصينا انا كان عندي تجربه في السودان في الخرطوم اللي النظام فيها السياسي قفل السينمات ببساطه بانه رفع الضرايب على الفن السينما بكل مكوناته فبالتالي الفن بطل يشتغل فاللي بيشتغلوا على احياء السينما السودانيه ما لقوش مكان يشتغلوا منه غير جوتا انستتيوت في الخرطوم وعاملين شغل في الحقيقه يعني متميز جدا في الحفاظ على الافلام القديمه وعلى انتاج افلام جديده. لكن لو بصينا على منطقه التعاون عموما وعندنا مشكله واضحه فيه دلوقتي في في المجال العام في مصر في الكلام حوالين فكره التمويل والتمويل الاجنبي والمؤسسات الاجنبيه ما بتديش ببلاش واكيد في اجندات بتضحى والكلام ده يعني اعتقد تامر برضه غطى جزء مهم من ده فكره الجاب بين الشمال والجنوب اللي مهم للطرفين وفي مصلحه الطرفين انه يتقلل بشده لو لكن في الحقيقه العمليه دي فيها ثلاث اطراف الطرف الاول هو الحكومه الحكومه المصريه اللي بتقفل بقدر الامكان على فكره التمويل وده بنشوفه دايما في قوانين الجمعيات الاهليه او المجتمع المدني اللي بتصدر وان كان عندنا درافت لو دلوقتي متقدم جدا وجيد جدا كنت بتكلم حد من المستشارين الوزير اللي بيعده فقلت له يعني انتوا بذلين جهد جيد جدا في في القانون الفكرة انه فعلا في فهم اكتر للواقع المصري دلوقتي مما كان عليه قبل كده يمكن بتصبيعة النظام الملتبس اللي كان موجود قبل الثورة في مصر لكن يمكن الصورة دلوقتي اوضح وظاهرة بشكل واضح العملية اللي احنا بنخوضها والاحتياج فعلا لتعاون عشان نقدر نطور العملية لكن كمان في الحقيقة لازم نتكلم على انه في معوقات كتيرة قوي بتيجي من جانب هذه المؤسسات يمكن اكثرها متذكرها دلوقتي هي محاولات الخلط اللي بتحصل من فتره لفتره من جانب الحكومات بره عن طريق المؤسسات دي في ان هي تربط الجانب السياسي بفكره التعاون على المستوى الثقافي او التنموي او الحكومي احيانا بعض الحكومات بره بتجد ان دي في فرصه ان هي تضغط بهذه الاوراق على الدول اللي آه وفي الحقيقه ده بي مش مشكلته مش انه اللحظه اللي بتحصل فيها العمليه دي وبتفك بعد كده المشكله بتاثر على الكريديبيليتي على المصداقيه على المدى الطويل برضه. آه ده على الثلاث المستويات اللي خاصين بفكره التعاون او التمويل الاجنبي آه في التعاون بس يعني يمكن احنا في الاطار المنتدى البدائي العربي اللي انا الجيل بتاعه عملنا دراسه عن الموضوع ده وعملنا مقارنه. انه في اوروبا وفي في اوروبا والدول المتقدمه مساله التمويل الاجنبي هي مساله مفتوحه تماما مفيش اي قيود عليها 
فيما يخص المجتمع المدني طبعا فيما يخص الاحزاب السياسيه ده موضوع ثاني او فيما يخص فيما يخص المجتمع المدني من مكونه الثقافي ما فيش اي قيود عليها غير الشفافيه ان انا كل فلوس بتجي لي انا بعلن عنها ومصاريفي خاضعه للرقابه وبالتالي في قدر كبير من انه اي حد يقدر يجي يشوف انا بعمل ايه بالفلوس دي ويراقب عليا فاذا خالفت القانون العام اللي كل المجتمع يعني بيرجع اليه ساعتها بتكون في عقوبات بالقانون العام عليا عشان كده مش هنلاقي في معظم الدول المتقدمه حسب قانون الجمعيات اللي احنا في مصر بقى لنا 12 سنه بنتكلم عليه وازاي نطوره وازاي نعمله هو مش موجود اصلا لانه في قانون بيحكم العلاقات في المجتمع وفي يعني اظهار وشفافيه واضحه في كل الامور اللي بتحصل وبالتالي اللي بيخالف القانون بيتعاقب بالقانون مش هيحتاج قانون محدد للمجتمع المدني. انا ممكن اقف هنا ونجاوب لكم. اوكي. So starting from the first question I'd like to move on uh, and talk about the funding lines. Uh, Kathy and Stefan both talked about how you are funding uh, and the structure of your uh, of your uh, funds. But some of it comes from what is similar to the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, and some of it is self-generated, even though you are a non-profit organization. But I would like to ask about uh, who who determines how the money, how the funds are spent, how they, how where do they go? Is it is it independent? Because to me, if you if you generate a third of your of your budget. Independently, you get to decide independently how to how to find it. So, Kathy? Yes. Um. So, if I start right from right from the beginning, um, I mean, we've talked about the two thirds that we earn from like the virtual institutes and language courses, and administering exams, and the managing contracts for for other organisations. Um, the, the third that we receive through government funding, through a government grant, um, that's reviewed every three years as a, a, a whole government comprehensive spending review, um, where individual ministries negotiate with Treasury on how much actual money each um, each ministry will get, and then within each ministry they um, work out and negotiate um, how much money will go to each department. Um, the British Council is what, what's called a non-departmental public body, um, but it still has a series of negotiations with the foreign ministry on, on how much, uh, with our, from our foreign uh, commonwealth office, how much um, the grant will be. But once, but after that, that's what I was just trying to explain the, the process of how the money comes in. Once that's agreed, then we determine the where, the how, the what the that money gets spent on. Yes. So we, we have a board of trustees, we have an executive board with a chief executive officer, um, we have advisory teams in different sectors, um, and we decide um, what the program is and where the um, how the money gets divided across the whole world. We're not. We're talking beyond now. So yes. that is our decision. If you are talking about Egypt, who is deciding how to divide your budget, and who is um, uh, deciding the priorities of this budget, and who is deciding uh, the the amount of money that you will put in every category of this uh, of this different areas. Okay, have to go that deep. <laughs> um, so British Council level of funding, um, the executive board decides on regional priorities and, and assigns the amounts to each region. We're in a region that we call MENA, Middle East and North Africa. Um, we have a regional director who then receives a budget for the whole region um, in consultation with the different sector teams and country teams across the region, it's divided up again. Uh, within country, it's divided further. 
And if you then want to take it down to the next level, I'm assigning the budget for arts work um, every year, uh, which I then manage. Um, you know, and, and it's it's then, and I obviously can't go off and do. You know, I couldn't suddenly decide to fund, I don't know, a health project in SU because that's outside my remit. But within my stra my strategy for the arts of Egypt. Um, which we formulated in consultation with people. But do you personally you. take part I, in that decision making itself? Yeah. I mean, not not at yeah, the very highest level, but does that trickle and down? But of course, within mm -hmm. Egypt, yes, within and Egypt. specifically the art budget. Yes, Egypt, of course. I but then that. before that, right before, what, how much yeah. with you the regional team? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you so have a hand in that. Yeah. 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 And then I make ultimately decisions on like, well, see my check. Again, there is a kind of a framework that you are working within. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but but this framework, but this framework is not made by by you or by your colleague. It's made by someone, and we. I think it's important to know how is this framework is decided. How, how who is saying? Our priorities in this region is going to be X, Y, and Z, and who and and, and what is the framework in that? In, in, uh, regarding, for example, we are allowed to spend the money that way, and we are not allowed to spend the money that way. I mean, if I mean, if you are so, I'm, I'm, I'm asking this just to, to to reach the point. If you are so convinced of something, but then it's not matching your framework. Are you able to break this framework? Is there a procedure to even to uh, to uh, uh, change this framework or to develop it or to 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 avoid to to, to make it better in the next year or something? I'm, I'm just I'm just saying this just to to to, to understand. I think it it is a it's a rolling process. So. I mean, within, you know, speaking for the British Council, we have 270 members of staff in Egypt. So we're working from the, the bottom up as well. You know, we're talking to people like you, like people in the audience. What does Egypt need? What does, um, you know, what is, what do people want to do? What are the ambitions in the film sector or the theatre sector? We feed that into our plans. And, and very often you see things coming in. You know, last year it was, Something this year it's I don't know you know street theatre is the thing so momentum builds up you then move your plan along you move your strategy along and it's a, an iterative process so um, yeah obviously we have a limited amount of funds each year and you know once they're divided up it's it's difficult to find more but you know if something really exciting comes along. Um, that, that is outside the normal plan or what we have planned, um, we can then make a case to say, okay, this is a you know, spontaneous opportunity that's come along and we really want to do it, we're excited by it. So there are ways. Okay, very yeah. sad. We do not have this uh, flexibility to, to yes. react to what is going on on the ground. Um, in our case, uh, it's quite similar. And I would like to take up your question if we are able to break the framework. And there's no need to break the framework because the general framework is really very general. On the ground, we have an operational independence. So it's the same case, uh, the same uh, structure. And like in your case, um, we have um, different levels. And uh, the highest level where we have a basic agreement there's very general aims, and then it took us down. But on the ground, uh, as uh, I said, um, we are partner-oriented. So the first thing is to see what's going on here, who are the partners, what are their needs, what do they want, and then we are developing together with them uh, a project. Of course, there are other projects where we bring, for example, artists from, from uh, Germany. Uh, for that case, we have advisory boards, for every, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, for, for like for, for visual arts, for cinema, for literature, and uh, so on. Yes, but I also want to ask you um, because you mentioned that you get reviewed every uh, three years, right? Yeah. Or like government funding? Government funding, yeah. yes, yes. But in general, in my understanding as well, and correct me on this, is that. From budget for every year, this is a federal grant. And within this grant, we, we are very flexible. But there are other types of funding, like, for example, I'm responsible for this project and coordinating the project in this framework of transformation and partnership. This is an extra funding, special funding. So special funding means um, another type of, um, of reporting. And uh, there is, but there's always, you know, it's always the kind of For example, 
I mean, w w w with one exception from good Institute, according to this exceptional fund, to, 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 to be funded to be a small part of the infrastructure. And of course, we are so grateful for that. But in the end of the day, it was so difficult for, not because not because the the, 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 the the European institutions people are not convinced but because this is the policy and then this is the matter of the priorities we know what is our priority and we know as as Egyptian people as people on the ground that what we need now and what are opportunities what, what what kind of opportunities we have and what chances we need to to, to, to and, and what's the core of, the, of, of our battle I think the core of our battle is to achieve a kind of social justice in culture, to make art and culture accessible by everyone and for everyone. And everyone has the right to produce and to, and, and to, 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 to produce and consume art as an artist or as an audience. And to do this, we need to, to build really a, 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 a very strong and coherent infrastructure that is not there because either the, the, the infrastructure of the country, of the state, is uh, 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 controlled by the Ministry of Culture, and we know that the Ministry of Culture is always serving the, the interest of the state, and is not, in, uh, it never, before, and it will never uh, support the freedom of expression of anyone, at least in, within the next few years. Hopefully this will change soon. But on the other side, we need to, to have spaces, we need to, to build uh, 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 an infrastructure that people can use and access. And in this uh, 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 situation, it was, of course, difficult for the European institutes to, to fund this thing because it's not matching the framework. And it's not because Cathy is not, is not convinced. I'm sure Cathy is so convinced. And actually, I think Kathy is more Egyptian than many of our Egyptians, really, of, of, of the Egyptians I know. But the thing is, she, she, she has limitation within her, her, her work, and it's always difficult to change this thing. And for me, I want to know who is this person, who is number zero, this ex person, who I never know, who never met me, and, most, and I think he never came to Egypt who decides how to spend, why it's not allowed to spend the, the money that way in Egypt. Why instead of, since Anya is here, instead of Rob is going to, 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 to be closed and this is going to affect the whole sector and affect something that we built for years. Why instead of trying to, 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 to save Rob by, by, I don't know, it was so difficult and it's closed. It was closed for a year. Why we, we couldn't set this as a priority and we reflect to this immediately? Because it's not, it's not working with the framework and then again it's not the problem with Stefan or Kathy or Anya or, uh, uh, or the people who are, or Gunter or, or the people who are working here. It's again, it's, it's because there is someone who we don't know and we, 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 who decides that we need to spend the money that way. And just I want to add something that one last thing is, is, is I think this is the core of the issue. How to value the priority of both sides of the equation. And again, since this relationship is not mutual, it's always going to, it will be very difficult to make it move forward unless we make it mutual. And this is a mutual also responsibility. Yes, I uh, wanted to comment on your question about useless art. I'm happy to work in a cultural uh, institution because we are entitled to support useless art. And in, in fact, I don't think there, there is useless art. But what I mean, you mean it's a is, metaphor. yeah, and it's, um, we are not supporting art for other means, like for you know, raising awareness for whatever reasons this developmental uh, uh, language. So there is space for arts for art's sake, and we don't want to instrum instrumentalize uh, arts. Um, 
having this said, we were also talking about the limit. That's why we are also not entitled to, for example, to invest in, in the infrastructure, like maybe a de developmental organization uh, would be able uh, to. But I'm quite uh, happy with my kind of work. <laughs> Yes, it's right. I mean, I, I think the microphone. And, you know, I, I agree with you, actually. Yeah, because it's, you know, we, we do have, I don't know who made the decision that we don't work in infrastructure. I don't know the name of that person. It's, it's I guess, a historical thing. Um, and I guess I also could go back to the office and argue that we should do that. But then, you know, and you know this, this through Cimatech, infrastructure projects are expensive. They nearly always overrun on timescales, they nearly always overrun on projects. Um, you know, it would, it would become in the end that we would do one infrastructure project a year, instead of stretching, um, stretching our budgets as far as they could go. And, you know, we would always, yeah, sort of winning the lottery and being able to fund every single priority in every single art form, it's, it's really difficult for us to, to work. So, so we then have to look at well, what other priorities are there. You know, we accept that there's an infrastructure priority and, and with our limits we can't do much of it. So then you know, people on the ground are saying that we really need skills, technical skills, networking opportunities. So you know, we focus where we can on, on the priorities that uh, that we can work with. Uh, it's just you know, our reality as well. And I know you know that. But. No, no, I, I, I know that and I also achieve what, what you said. But the, the thing is, for me, it's also a political thing because since this is also reflecting to the whole uh, movement of what's going on since, since two years. I mean, um, for me, the, the, the issue of the infra, as I said, it's always better if we uh, uh, try to make, to balance this relationship and to make it uh, as mutual as we can. And this means that we need to help all the new initiatives to be independent. And this question of an institution and institutionalizing the, the, the initiatives is, is really important. But again, how, when, who can do that in this environment? I mean, I know many friends here in, in, uh, among the audience who are working 16, 17, 18 hours a day trying to build uh, an institutional structure for their initiatives. And it's so difficult because we're starting from zero. And I mean, this is something very common in Egypt. And I, I'm, I'm sure many people will support what I'm saying. And there are many examples, even attending. And, but then, without helping this, these institutions to be independent, then we are creating a model, a model of uh, uh, a model that is first is not is not mutual because we are codependent uh, within this model. And we need always to, to, to be funded by these institutions. Versus, uh, uh, if, we, if we build the infrastructure once, many people will benefit from it. So this is, this is also very important, because, because without, without helping these new initiatives to be independent, it will be always difficult. To, to build the, the, the platform of the civic society. Which, which can, I, can, I, can, I, sorry, can I just ask a quick question back then? So what do you think we should do? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, first of all, I, I don't think you should do something. Um, I think we all <laughs> should do something. I, I think, I think it's, there is also a mutual responsibility. And I want to reflect to what, what, uh, what Mohammed said, and I think it's also very important. We also have a problem that we, as, 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 uh, as, um, as, 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 a, as a community, as a, as 
a culture, an art and culture community, we also don't have one front. And maybe we don't need to, to have one front, but also we don't need, we don't have like even a very basic uh, uh, common um, understanding of what we need. And this is even not, it's just very newly, like in the last year, we started to talk to each other and we started to, to build a kind of a network and we started to understand that we need to help and support each other to be able to move forward. But we still are very new in this. And I think it's not the responsibility of, of one, 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 one side. It's, it's a shared responsibility. Again, everything has to be mutual. Uh, so from our side, we need to, to really to know, to, to come up with, uh, with, uh, with, with, uh, uh, with, with a proposal of what we need and a model of how we can make this thing happen. And from the institution side, they have to find a way to be open to accommodate these needs and negotiate. Because I think we have very good negotiators. I mean, Kathy, uh, Stefan, Gunther, Everyone, they are great negotiators, but the thing is, we need also to 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 agree together what is really needed, and this has to include everyone. And we need to to find the way to find a, 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 the process that helps everyone to be in. Yes, which brings me to the question that I wanted to to, to go forward to is um, the question of language. We've discussed the language of the, of the panel before, and what, which, which language we should speak in, and we've all agreed on the idea of practicality. But I, the, langu the language issue is the idea that um, if I wanted to apply for a fund or to start a project and so on, to come to, it, if I go to an institution, I'd have to apply in English. And that's, I mean, I guess that's very limiting. I mean, some, I mean, some would agree, would argue that there's no artist that does not speak uh, English, but uh, but the idea that the language is is the, the language is one part of it, but the other thing, and I and and I speak for myself, and I speak for other artists as well. The idea of writing a proposal seems so. It's suffocating sometimes. You, it's very alienating. Alien. You know what the word I want to say? <laughs> alienating to a lot of um, to a lot of artists. The idea of writing a proposal to explain what you want in your, in in detail. Sometimes it seems like the price that you pay to to to, to get the fund. And, I, and I'm not saying in agendas and so on. I'm just saying in responsibility. And you have to be responsible, you have to be accountable, and you, when you want to do a project, it's just, it's so heavy. And I think, and this is a question of how you make yourself accessible. And I, and I just want to ask you about how you could change that. Okay, you want me to talk to me? Uh, well, I will immediately challenge you about both points you made. Um, uh, we're giving a specific example, the, the program we started um, for uh, grants for artists. We will take applications in English or Arabic. It doesn't make any difference to us, the team, to cope with both. Um, and if somebody's more comfortable expressing what they want to do in Arabic, then that's fine with us. But the idea of expression itself, right, and proposals. Well, the second thing, I mean, I have to do this as well, and I don't think it's something that's specific to artists. Proposal writing is horrible. Um, I hate doing this as well. Um, and certainly, again, with our Grants for Artists program, we have kept this as, as simple as possible. It's, it's pretty much a, a who are you? Um, what have you already done? What do you want to do? Um, and, you know, a, a brief budget. Um, and, and we work. We work through that, preparing the things that the, the project proposals that come in. Um, we keep it as simple as possible. The important thing for us is that, that you deliver uh, what you say you will deliver. 
I mean, you, you did make the comment about you have to be responsible and accountable. Well, yes. Um, yes. I mean, that's always going to be the but case. But sometimes it seems, well, like I said, I mean, you always have to, but it seems so, such uh, energy vacuum, you know, like it takes so much energy that... But, but Anna, Anna, I mean, I have to say that the, the applications of all the European institutions in Egypt, in our culture, at, uh, at least, is the easiest application in the world. How we apply to Guten Institute, or how to apply to the British Council, and how we apply to any functional institution is so easy comparing to the EU proposal, for example. <laughs> comparing to, really, it's, 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 I mean, it's like, uh, and then also, I, I think, I mean, I think also it's too much to ask people just to give us money because we are cool. No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I had this conversation with, I think we've already quoted Anne, that she's in the audience somewhere. I had this conversation with Anne here today. I mean, we, we obviously have to account for the money we hand over to anybody. And, you know, no matter how big or small, but we're, we're certainly not, and I know possibly the EU is, you know, we, we agree a project um, from both sides. We agree an amount, we hand that amount over as a grant. Um, and for us, the, the, we don't want anybody to spend all their creative energy on getting us receipts for every screw or hammer or you know, spray can of paint that they, they bought. Mm -hmm. We want the energy to go into actually delivering the project. So as long as somebody doesn't go completely wild and say, oh, okay, we're going to spend 90% of the budget on the coffee breaks and only 10% on cans of paint, then, you know, it's, it's, we want a sensible approach. But, but within the, the total budget, then you know, we trust people like them to, to deliver. Because that's what they've said they're going to do. But then don't, aren't, I'm sorry, but uh, aren't, isn't sometimes, and you've also said this, that uh, they're sometimes accused of working with the same people over and over. And that, that there must be a reason for that. Other um, than, you know, that they deliver. Yeah, I, I don't think that on the local level here in Egypt uh, that we have a problem uh, with language. Uh, all our, our information are, is in Arabic and in, in, in German, usually. Uh, of course, if you have proposals which are going to, to other entities, other levels in Europe, then we need another language. But I understand this, this uh, problem. And uh, of course, uh, accountability is very important and transparency, but we all are suffering from certain bureaucratic schemes and mechanisms which are taking so much time from uh, which we would like to spend for, for other more creative uh, 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 things. But um, on a general level, of course, language is also reflecting certain political and uh, economical uh, uh, structures. That's uh, uh, right. But also I see that there is, um, there is a change. And uh, local languages, of course, Arabic is a very important language, which are gaining more and more importance also on an international level. Uh, on the other hand, if someone, for example, wants to participate in a program in, in Germany, then usually either the program is in German or it's in, in English. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have special we build special visitors groups where we can provide Arabic um, translation. But uh, usually, I, I understand this. This is may might be um, a problem for many people <coughs> to, uh, who want to participate and to, to apply. But I don't find an easy solution for that. Talk to the previous panel, which was on uh, how does art and resistance sell, and uh, how does art and resistance sell. Yeah. Um, I would, I would also um, like to talk about within the past few years, we've seen so many projects come out that were, of course very, very political, and most of them were very bad quality, and 
and uh, and it seemed like a lot of them had to come out very fast. And um, and I I'd like to talk to you kind of about and, and um, about uh, why do you think the interest was so high? What what is the reason? And apart from the official, let's say what was said the reason that there was such interest in it, but the real one was. Yeah, I mean it's it's obvious. I mean, uh, for me, I had a story that I uh, that I said I think many times before. I mean, people hear me. That six year, six months before the revolution, I was detained in in, in three European airports, uh, and I spent like uh, four, three nights trying to prove to them that I am not trying to to I'm not a terrorist. And, and then six months later, when the revolution came, I was chased by every producer in Europe asking me, when are you going to make a film about the Egyptian revolution? And it was really interesting because one day I wrote on my Facebook, I will not do a film about the revolution, please leave me in peace. And uh, uh, is there a problem with the mic? OK. So um, uh, I think basically what happened is the Egyptian revolution came as a surprise, not only for, for Mubarak, but also for many people. Uh, and it's all of a sudden, the whole world found out that all the, the calculation that they, they did is not really right, and what they think about this region is, is not necessarily the right thing. And then they need to understand what happened. And in that sense, they were, there was a kind of a market that is created in the, in the West because they want to understand what happened here. Yeah. And of course, art and culture was part of it. And I, there are many occasions when uh, I was only asked to do something about the revolution. And then there was this term, which is how to be how to express the revolution in art. And for me, being revolutionary in art, meaning not to make a film or a song about the revolution, is to be revolutionary in uh, uh, using the language of, of cinema or of music. And this is, for me, is the, the revolution in so basically, they, they, I think that the, that the whole world wanted to understand what happened here, and there is also a kind of uh, uh, laziness. Mm -hmm. So they, they they cannot follow the news every day. So they need like the Egyptian Revolution in 90 minutes, or in uh, in 70 pages, or in one exhibition. So they can come up with an idea of what happened. But this is what I was saying, that instead of countering the stereotype, we are re-establish a new stereotype, which is, so it's exactly in, in six month period, I moved from the stereotype of the Arab terrorist to the stereotype of the, the young revolution. And it's cool, of course. But, but again, it's a stereotype because I'm not neither this or that. Um, and um, many things. I think the idea is that the specific of the Arab country is that the country is the country in all the world. The countries are different. Everyone is talking about it. It's not direct, but it's a big deal. It's a big deal in the country. I think that the country is the country in the country. يناير اسقط الاسطوره دي يعني ما بقاش فيه الموضوع ده وبالتالي هنا فكره الانسان العربي المواطن العربي في المنطقه عندنا بقى بيتبص له بصه ثانيه وبالتالي فكره الفن والثقافه اللي هم اساسهم شخص لان ممكن في السياسه نشتغل على المؤسسات ممكن لكن الثقافه والفن في الاخر اساسهم الشخص بيبقى في اهتمام اكثر وبالتالي ده يمكن حاله الموجه اللي حصلت في الموضوع التعاون الثقافي تحديدا بعد بعد الثوره غير الرغبه في في الفهم اللي اتكلم عليها تاني. كمان فكره انه 
غلبة في التواجد بين الناس على الأرض أكتر حاجة بتعملها هي الصحافة أكتر برضو من السياسة والتنمية اللي بتبقى في مناطق محددة فبالتالي وفهم العقلية أكتر فعشان كده أعتقد إن الثقافة هي اللي خدت أكبر بوش أكبر دفع بعد يناير في فكرة التعاون أعادت الاقتناع أو يعني خلقت حالة من الاقتناع بإنه في مجال للتعاون على المستوى ده يمكن كتير كانوا قافلين عليه قبلها مش بيفكروا فيه كانوا شايفين فكرة كمان إنه التغيير هيجي في مصر من جوه يعني كانوا بيقولوا ممكن التغيير في مصر هيجي من جوه الاستابلشمنت من جوه الدولة وبالتالي خلينا نشتغل على الجزء اللي يتعلق بالتطور الديمقراطي او التنميه يعني الحتت اللي جوه المؤسسه اللي تعاون فيها مع جوه المؤسسه فكره التغيير جاء من بره المؤسسه ومن بره الدوله من بره النظام خلى في رغبه في التواصل اكتر مع اللي بره النظام فاعتقد ده ده عنصر مهم جدا في تفسير اللي حصل في الدفعه اللي حصلت كده بيف كويس Uh, we barely have time for the, so I have to end the, this part of the panel and open up the, our q &A. So, thank you. Okay, so the questions. The panelists, uh, I thought it was a very interesting discussion. Um, I was just wondering about one point that somehow didn't really come up, and I have the feeling maybe that's because it's the elephant in the room. That is, um, cultural institutions in Egypt, when I'm thinking about that currently when I open the newspaper, is that there's a large part of the population and a large part of the public discussion which is actually questioning the legitimacy of what cultural institutions are doing in this country. Are they undermining the social fabric of this society? And um, I was wondering, maybe my question to the two panelists from the cultural institutions would be, um, is there something that your institutions did wrong, that this kind of oppression came uh, or just started in Egypt, and if nobody in this room agrees with that, which at least seems to be the case on the panel, where are the strong voices from an Egyptian side that are countering this kind of argument? Thank you. Uh, aspects. Like, the big part of it is, uh, is, uh, is part of the media brainwash campaign that is like trying to uh, uh, make Egypt as if it was targeted by a global conspiracy, including Israel, Iran, the States, Iraq, Libya, Cambodia, <laughs> Vietnam, everything. And this is too because now there is a kind of uh, a tendency we need to be so Egyptian and we protect our, our country from this dangerous that is coming from outside and we, we, we so in this case that they will use every possible tool. They will use, they will use the, the, the tourists, the, the writers, the journalists, the, the, the institutions, just to prove that there is this conspiracy. But, um, but I mean, I'm, it's not, I'm, I'm sure, that it's, it's just in their mind. Or this is what they want to put in the Egyptian collective. Uh, Maybe you want to talk about this because it's a good thing. That was in the بس اي نظام فاشي لازم بيبني عدو خارجي وليه حلفاء في الداخل ويبتدي يشن عمل على الحلفاء اللي في الداخل يعني ده باي ذا بوك كده انا فاكر ان انا قريت كتاب اول ما خلصت جامعه كان اسمه بيلدينج فاشيزم الكتاب انا نسيته تماما بس في حاجات بتحصل بقول اكيد اللي بيعملها بيقرا في الكتاب ده دلوقتي يعني هو بيفكرني بالكتاب لما بتحصل بس انا عايز اقول على حاجه برضو عشان احنا برضو بنضخم في الكلام ده اه في تاثير واه في حالة بس انا انا مثلا اي اي يعني انا بعمل تقييم منظمات المجتمع المدني. فجزء اساسي من التقييم ان انا بقابل مستفيدين من خدمات المنظمات الحقوقيه او التنمويه. عمر المستفيدين ما كان عندهم مشكله في التمويل لان دي قضيه عندهم اصلا او فكره انه المستفيدين ما عندهمش اي مشكله مع الموضوع ده والقضيه دي يعني هي قضيه طبقه وسطى اصلا. فعلا لكن لا عمري نزلت مثلا وانا بقيم مؤسسه حقوقيه او منظمه مؤسسه التنمويه وسالت الناس 
اللي خدوا خدمه مؤسسه دي وقال لي انا متضايق اصل المؤسسه دي بتاخد فلوس من من يعني من الخارج او المؤسسه دي عملت كذا وانا احيانا معظمهم ما بيسالش اصلا عن الموضوع ده وما عندوش مشكله معاه ما بيعرفش يعني ما بقول له انت عارف مصدر لا ما عندوش اي مشكله معاه وبالتالي فيها جزء كبير برضو تاثير الاعلام زي ما احنا بنتكلم وعلى انه احنا الاختلاط مع الطبقه الوسطى من خلال نحس ان دي قضيه عظيمه بينما الفئات المستفيده الحقيقيه ما عندهاش المشكله الحقيقيه. احنا في الدراسه اللي اشرت اليها عملنا على قضيه التمويل الاجنبي اللي حصل في وقت المجلس العسكري كانت هادي شويه لان الدراسه معموله السنه دي في اول السنه دي فسالنا الناس هل هي قضيه يعني مساله قانونيه واضحه في مشاكل قانونيه ولا هي مساله سياسيه انه في ولا هي مساله شو اعلامي؟ فمعظم الاجابات كانت انه لا هو شو اعلامي حاولت المجلس العسكري المجلس العسكري كان مش وكانت الناس انه المجلس العسكري يكتسب بيها شرعيه على الارض طبعا الناس عبرت عن ده بشكل او باخر في الاستماره بس في الحقيقه كانت الغالبيه العظمى شايفه انه موضوع آآ آآ شو اعلامي حاولت السلطه تستغله عشان تعمل نفسها شرعيه في وقت كانت فيه عندها ازمات بعد احداث محمد محمود المترجمة المفروض انها متعودة عليا بس خلص ده مش معناه انه مفيش الطرف التاني ما عندوش مشاكل لا الطرف التاني دي النقطة اللي انا هددتها فكرة انه في لحظات معينة بتستخدم التمويل لهدف معين القضية انه الأثر بيفضل طويل جدا انا 2006 حضرت كمشاهد جلسة استماع في الكونجرس كنت في امريكا وكان وقتها احداث نادي القضاء هنا في مصر واتقال بالحرف دون بوش تو هارد اون اور فريندز بيكوز وي نيد ذيم ان غزه يعني كده صراحه فالبيان اللي كان هيطلع ما طلعش فاللحظه دي مش مش مشكلتها في اللحظه مشكلة انت بتفقد مصداقيه عشان تستعد محتاج سنتين شغل على الارض مع الناس عشان تثبت لهم ان دي لحظه وعدت لكن هي في الحقيقه بتستخدم وده اللي اتكلمت على الاجنده بتاعت المجتمع المدني هي دي فكرتها انه لا طبعا مدني في عندنا في الغرب لازم يبقى عنده اتفاق على اجنده ما على جبهه موحده ولا لا اجنده واسعه بس على الاقل في تفاهم بينهم بيستخدم ضد حكومات يعني بمعنى ان المجتمع المدني والحكومه ما هماش طرف ضد مجتمع مدني وحكومه ثانيه لا مفترض تبقى انه اللي عاملين في مجال الثقافه في الجانبين هما فريق وفي موجه يتفاوضوا مع حكومتين اللي هي حكومه هنا وحكومه هناك في الحقيقه لان دول اللي عايزين الاستقلاليه ودول اللي عايزين يطوروا فانه دول اللي عايزين يستخدموها استخدام سياسي. وبالتالي هنا ده المهم من فكره الاجنده اللي كنت حابب اشرحها. هاي اي ام جو سي ذس ان انجلش So uh, I think we should establish the basics here and that the cultural centers here are not as independent as uh, some people make it seem like we can call it independent but realistically at the end of the day it's one way or another the mouthpiece of the state where it comes from whether it's Germany or Britain I think this is clear because there's a lot of limitations to what you can work with like for example you wouldn't be able to use this uh, money and funding that you have to have activities to promote the idea of you know fighting British and German imperialism or whatever because obviously the governments would not be interested in something like that and you wouldn't be allowed to and not only that but even all the income that you come and the funding that happens has to be approved and I think you've said this one way or another by the state now what I want to get to is is that this state is not offering these services to the Egyptian people because they're being nice or because they you know, maybe like what you said the time about the gap and because we're behind and we need like the culture people to teach us how to be proper human beings it's not it's not obviously that simple and obviously if the states are going to invest then there's going to be interests in it and if they're just after the well-being of Egyptians well, you know, if they're just after the well-being of people, then why would they do it? I mean, obviously, you know, England, UK didn't go into Iraq, you know, to make the world a better place and kill a million Iraqis and leave the, uh, the country in a mess. And Germany wasn't selling all these weapons and tanks to Saudi Arabia this year, last year, and the year before, hundreds of tanks and over $2 billion in weapons to, um, sorry, over $2 billion to Saudi Arabia. Uh, just uh, you know, to a pro you know, as part of their cultural program. Obviously, Saudi Arabia is the last place where you'd have any sort of even the cinema. You're not allowed to have cinema. There's no freedom of speech. You, you, women can't even drive. And Germany uh, puts a lot of money and effort into supporting the military, bearing into consideration that Saudi Arabian government, the royal family, sorry, the Saudi Arabian royal family are using 
these weapons to crush dissent in the East and to crush dissent in Bahrain. And the tanks that invaded Bahrain from Saudi Arabia, a lot of them were German tanks. So obviously they're not doing, the state isn't doing this uh, just to make this world a better place. That doesn't mean that the state is not going to ever do a good service. For example, the NHS and the health uh, system in Germany, uh, obviously this is because if the state stops this funding, the German people, I'm saying uh, the state obviously uh, has to, for example, spend on public service because if they do not, then the people of Germany and the people of England will rise up and there will be strikes and people won't agree. That is a democratic system. However, uh, no one in the UK or in Germany is partaking in the democratic decision to give Egyptians money for culture. And no one in Egypt has any say in how much money we get and how we spend it. So what I'm trying to say is, is to say that these cultural institutions are here to help bridge the gap and help you know, make us more cultural and give us freedom is not only naive, but it's actually insulting to our intelligence. Thank you. I tried to, to, to make it clear in, in my words at the beginning that you know, it's, it's not as easy like that. We are not here as, you know, being mouthpiece of, of a government. It's a wide field of negotiations which is taking place on, on different levels. Yeah. Then, um, I don't get uh, um, exactly this relationship I mean, to the tanks in Saudi Arabia. I, I can sit here, I, I can criticize it. I'm not uh, the mouthpiece of, of someone selling uh, tanks and, and so on. Or we can have, we can um, organize a discussion about uh, the situation in, in Arab countries, including uh, Saudi Arabia. This is one part where, of course, there is a government and there's ministries and there are people deciding on that. And there are other, um, uh, other uh, frameworks where we are working in. So, I don't see so much the, 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 the connection between it. It's, I think it's, it's much more complicated than that. That would be my answer to the question. I think, I, I, think it would be, I think it would be my answer as well. Um, and I think picking up on your final point, um, where, where I think you said, and I, I hope I've written this down correctly, no one in the UK is partaking in the decision making about where their money goes. Um, well, I think there are, because there's elections every five years, and you're not happy where the money's going, then that government is voted out and you look for somebody who does agree with your, your agenda.